How's it going guys? What I wanted to do in this video is I have gotten some questions about trends and how you can go back and pull data from uh, past trends over time. Now some of this is going to depend on how exactly you have your trends set up. There are a, a lot of different options and what I'm going to do is actually just look at a couple of trends that we have. I'm going to go in here, uh, of course I'm basically I'm looking at a, uh, let me scroll back, I'm just going to grab a zone temp and just look at the trend on it for this particular unit and you can see here. I, this is one way of doing it. I go into the extension and I hit trend and you can see the trend here. Now, there are several options that you have when you set up your trends. Uh, this little book right here is where you can go in and actually see some of the configuration of your trends. Now, when you set your trends up or even after you have it set up, one of the things that you can do if you have the server space is to turn on the repository storage. You can see that for this trend, it is false. And what exactly that is, is basically all of the trend data that is captured, once the trend fills up, it will actually just start dumping that data to the server. Now, you need to remember that, you, you know, depending on how much storage space that you have on your server, also depending on the amount of trends that you do like this, uh, you know, that is something that will play into the, uh, you know, your server. You don't want to fill up your server by having just a bunch of everything, all of your trends just dumping to the server. You're more critical to trends, uh, power history, sort of, that, you know, that sort of, those sort of things. You may want to store those longer term, but anything that you don't want to store longer term, you should have this set to false. Another thing that will affect it as far as how much data you can store in the trend uh, before it would need to dump to a server or before it just rolls off is how often you have it to uh, sample. You know, here 1800 seconds, uh, you know, other trends would be every hour. It just really depends. Uh, you know, you can also change it to where it captures changes of value. You can specify exactly how uh, much of a value that you want to change whether it's a tenth of a degree or a half a degree or five degree or whatever there again it goes back to the way that you configure your trend another way that you can actually go in and do some comparison is by using the trend viewer what we're going to do now i'm going to actually go over here and just grab a couple of zone temps and we'll just do a quick comparison. And once I have those highlighted, I'm going to go up to my view and I'm going to go to trend viewer. And what this will do is it is actually going to pull the trends for both of those two points and put them in a graph together. Now, a neat thing about this is you can go back a little further, particularly if you have trends set up to where they're uh, you know, dumping to the repository and you want to do some comparisons, uh, you know, trying to do some troubleshooting or whatever, you can go here to our little book again. I'm going to click that and you can pick a range start and a range end, okay? And for this, I'm just going to show you an example as well. I'm actually going to go back a couple of months. Let's go back to October 1st. And now that I have selected that, I'm going to go back and look at my trend. I want to show you something very interesting, though. Okay, here's today's date currently. Now, if I hit time, I'm just going to go back and see. You can see here the 17th. And then when I flip it back the other way, uh, and of course it will take just a few minutes to refresh everything, all the data that it's trying to pull, you can see that it's only going back to the 14th. Okay, that is because these trends that I showed you just a minute ago does not have the repository enabled. So it's only going to be able to pull data only as far back as the trend has been capturing it. You can remember I started this, I went all the way back to October of 2020, but it is not going to go past February 14th because of the way these trends are set up. Now, there are other ways that you can do this. 
uh, you know, uh, you know, and if you do have a have the repository active, you can go back much further on your data. Let me just look here if I can find another trend that uh, would be a good example. Uh, okay, I'm going to go in here just for exact just for example. I'm going to go to our hourly demand. Let's see here. You can see here. Uh, I'm going to go to select view. Uh, well, let's try it this way first. I'm just going to show the trend first. I'm going to go in here to the trend, and you can see here it is kept going back so far. Uh, but now let me look at this to, just to see. And I do have the repository enabled here. Now, if I go, I have this highlighted here. I'm going to go up to view trend viewer. And inside here, I basically will have basically similar uh, a screenshot of the date range that is selected by default. But if I go in here, I can back it up as far as uh, how far back I want to go. So I'm just going to go back to August 1st. And now this is going to be pulling a lot of data on this trend. And you can see here it's starting to populate with that data in here. And we are now back to August 1st. You can see the trend of the KW demand, hourly demand for this particular meter. And that is one example of how you can look at historic data on trends. But remember, a lot of that is going to depend on how you have your trends set up. Guys, I hope this has answered a couple of questions. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the description below. Also, check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Check out the links down in the description. Anything you buy through those links kind of helps to go to support the channel. You can also help support us on Patreon and that sort of thing. But guys, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel, and we will see you next time. Thank <music> you.